Okay, so Junior Roberts here again with real juniorroberts.com. We're on to video two of our introduction to graphs in physics video series. I've done video one in a previous video. I will place a link in the description of this video so you can go ahead and check out that video. So let's go right into this video. All right, so we're going to start by discussing our learning objective for this video. Right, and in this video, we will discuss how we go about accurately plotting graphs in physics given a set of data. Right, so we're going to start out by refreshing our memory about what is a graph. Again, if you haven't yet watched video one, in video one, I outlined what is a graph. Right, so I'll place a link at the top of this video. So you can go ahead and check out that video. But essentially a graph, as we discussed in video one, is a visual representation of data, right? That shows trends and relationship between those set of data, right? And whenever we plot graph, we use a graph paper to plot graphs. And a graph paper is simply a paper which consists of a grid of intersecting vertical and horizontal lines. Now, we're going to discuss now how we go about plotting graphs in physics, and we're going to be taking on a seven step approach. So, again, in order for us to plot a graph, we will most often use a table of data, right? So, in this case, uh, we're going to utilize this table here. This is this might look similar from video one. However, I've made some slight adjustments to the table in order to use the information in the table to plot the graph in this video. So the first step we will use when plotting a graph is to draw the vertical y-axis and choose an appropriate scale. So let's see exactly how we go about doing that. All right, so we'll start out by getting our graph paper. And again, as we said, we'll draw the vertical y-axis, right? So we're going to be drawing it on this side here, and it's going to go all the way up vertically. So we have drawn our vertical y-axis, right? Now let's look at what we do in the next step. So the next step requires us to draw in the horizontal x-axis and choose an appropriate scale, All right? So in this, we have drawn our y-axis already, so now we'll simply draw our x-axis, right? And as you can see, for each axis, I've chosen, first of all, I've, I've labeled each axis. So in this case, this is our x-axis, and this is our y-axis, right? Because this is important when we plot graph, right? We need to indicate which axis is the x-axis and which axis is the y-axis. And also, I've chosen a scale, right? In this case, for the y-axis, first of all, I've chosen a scale of two centimeters, right? Because each of these boxes here is one centimeter. So we have one centimeter here and two centimeters. So I have a scale of two centimeter equal one unit on the y-axis. And for the x-axis, I have a scale of two centimeters equal two units, all right? Now, let's look at the next step. So our next step, right, requires us to label the y-axis and include the quantity with its unit and the scale, right? So let's look at how we go about doing that, all right? So we're going to start now by labeling our y-axis and we're going to include the quantity that will be on the y-axis, its unit, and also the scale that we use for the y-axis. All right. So for the y-axis, the quantity on the y-axis will be force applied, and the symbol used to represent force is a capital F, and the unit which we use is the Newton represented by a capital N. And for our scale now, right, we use a scale of two centimeters to one unit, and in this case, our unit is the Newton. All right, so let's look at the next step. So step four requires us to label the x-axis, including the quantity with its unit and the scale. So we're going to do the same thing that we have done for the y-axis, 
for the x-axis. All right. So on the x-axis, the quantity will be the length of the spring. Right. The symbol for the length is L, and the unit that we use will be the centimeter. And in this case, we use a scale of two centimeters to two units. And in this case, our unit is centimeter. So let's look at what the next step requires us to do. So step five requires us to plot the points using a sharp dark pencil and we're going to use either dots in circles or X's to plot our points. Right? Now, in this case, right, I'll be using a dot, right? Uh, however, as we just discussed a while ago, we must use dots in circles or X's, but for the purpose of this demonstration, I will simply use dots to indicate our points. Right? So, so for this, we're going to need to take a look at our table, right? So we can see our table here with our data. So to plot our points, we'll use the data in the table as a guide. So for our first row, we see that when the force applied is zero newtons, the length of the spring is also zero, right? So when the force applied, since that's on the y-axis, we're going to look on the y-axis and find zero, right? So this is when a force of zero newton is applied and the corresponding value for the length of the spring is also zero, right? So that means our first point will be right here, right? So, so I've gone ahead and uh, plotted all the points and as you can see, each point, right? corresponds to a set of data given in the table. So this is the point for the first set of data in the table, and this is the point for the last set of data in the table. And again, each point corresponds to a set of data given in the table. All right, so let's look at the next step. All right, so after we have plotted our points, all right, the next step requires us to use a straight edge to draw the line of best fit. And we define the line of best fit as the line that best represents the average of all the points that are plotted. So let's look at how we go about doing that. All right, so again, so again, we're gonna take our straight edge and we're gonna simply place it along these points here and draw what is called our line of best fit, right? So in this case, our line of best fit, right, will be this line here, right? which shows the average of all the points. Now, in this case, because our points are perfectly placed on the graph, we get a very good line of best fit, all right? Now, our final step, right? Step seven requires us to include a suitable title for the graph, right? And again, if you remember from video one, we will place our title at the top of the graph, usually we would place it on the graph paper here, on the grid portion of the graph paper, but in this case, because of limited space, I will place the title up here. So our title says that graph showing the force against length for a small spring. All right. So this is our graph completed. As you can see, we have everything that is required for the graph. We have our title. Right, we have our two axes that are labeled completely, and we have our plotted points on the graph. Okay, so let's quickly wrap what we have learned together thus far. Right, so what we have learned so far is that a graph is a visual representation of data, and it shows trends and relationship between that set of data. Right, and we use a graph paper, right, to plot graphs, and we use a sharp dark pencil to indicate our plotted points. And all graphs must have the following, a suitable title, labeled axes, appropriate scale, and the data points plotted appropriately. And to plot graphs, we can use a seven-step approach to plot our graph. So again, this was Junior Roberts coming to you with realjuniorroberts.com. If there's anything in this video that you wish to get further clarification on, please post it below in comments and I'll do my best to clear up any misconceptions for you. Like this video if it was helpful, and if you think others will benefit, please go ahead and click the share button. Click subscribe and the bell notification so you'll be updated whenever I post new videos like this. And thank you for watching.